Hello everyone. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. Until now we have covered most of the sub-modules within SAP Finance and Controlling and we've discussed them as an overview in the past videos. We will now look at the demo which will cover the most important transaction codes in SAP. We will use the presentation with a combination of the actual SAP screen for this demo. You will find an SAP logon icon once you install the SAP GUI on your machine. It will look something like this on the right side. Once you double click on that, you will find that a screen like an SAP logon opens like this. The latest version is the SAP logon pad 740 but you may also use versions like 640, 710, 720, 730. These are basically different versions of a logon pad and how the GUI will look like in front on the screen. Currently, as per the screenshot, you can see that there is an SAP logon pad 720 and you see on the right side, there are two different systems. There are different systems in SAP. For example, you will have one development system where you will do the configuration as a consultant. You will have a test system where all the testing takes place. You will have a quality system where all the quality related testing takes place. And mostly that is done by the end users in a company or an organization. You will also have a training system which is specifically built only for training the end users and the employees of a company. And finally you will have the production system. The production system is the most important system where all the live transactions happen once SAP is up and running in an organization. For this example we will be using a training system and we will look into it briefly. This is how an SAP login screen looks like. There are four important parameters over here, as you see. First is the client. A client is nothing but a three digit code, which is decided beforehand in coordination with the security or the basis team. Secondly, you will have the username and thirdly, the password. These two are again, very specific to every user in a company. It is always recommended that a username and password should not be shared by two different people within the same company. This is also to be maintained by the consultants working on any project. And lastly, there is a language option. As we saw in the earlier videos, SAP does have the capability of running in different languages. The default language is English, but you can enter any other language which you need over here. For example, you can enter DE for German or FR for French. This is the basic SAP window and we will discuss what are the different kind of options that are available on a particular window. Firstly, right on the top, there is a gray bar where you will only have the details related to your system and your client. This is called the screen header. The next line is called the menu bar, where you have the different options of entering into various menu systems. For example, you can click on any of these options and you will have multiple items available within. It's very similar to how you use file, edit, and options in your menu bar in Microsoft Excel or Microsoft Word. It's very similar to that in terms of the looks. Then you have a standard toolbar. The standard toolbar mainly has a command field where you will enter the transaction code which you want to use in SAP. SAP has inbuilt transaction codes and there are a lot of them 
and we will go through some of these in finance today so we will understand how does the command field work you will also see that there are other buttons next to it for example this green button is called the back button the next one is a yellow button for coming out of the window or maybe escape and the red one is called cancel button you can cancel and you can shut the login window completely over here you also have various options like up down and page up page down etc which you can also use on your keyboard if required the next bar is called the title bar this exactly tells you where you are currently in the SAP transactions for example you may be in a display transaction you may be in a change transaction you may be let's say in a purchase acquisition like this option or you may also be in a GL account balance option or you can be in a display document option whatever you are doing gets displayed here in the title bar the next bar is called an application toolbar this toolbar is again important because it gives you options like selecting all the data on the screen which you are viewing right now or deselecting the data there are options of also transporting and releasing any information we will come to these details in a later video as you see the last button there is also an option of doing a sum total so these buttons are available in some screens and they are not available in some others. It depends on what kind of transaction you are doing or what kind of job you are doing within SAP. The next one is the screen body. Once all these bars are completed on the top, you will have a huge body which will have all the details and where you will be actually working and inputting. It can be a report which you are just viewing or it can be an input screen like for example you are creating a new document so the screen body does all those functions lastly you have the status bar a status bar is where it will flash when you are entering anything and whether is it okay or is it a warning or is it an error for example, if you mistakenly enter the date in a wrong format or for example, within the date, instead of entering decimal, you enter a comma and you press enter, it will give you a warning in red and that warning or that error will be displayed on the bottom in the status bar. So this is an introduction to how an SAP screen will look like. You do not have to memorize this because as you go on working on SAP, either in the training or in any other system, you will understand what each and every bar over here means. Now, let's log in into the SAP system and let's start viewing these transactions. The first transaction we will view is for displaying an account balance. We are checking an overall balance available on one GL account over here. The menu path of every transaction code is given on the right, as well as the transaction code is given here in black. I will switch to the SAP screen now. And this is the place where you input your transaction code. It's called FS10N as you just saw in the presentation. Once you enter this, you can either click on this green button on the left, which is called Enter, or you can press the Enter key on your laptop or computer. Once I do this, if you noticed, the status bar at the bottom of the screen gives you an idea of what exactly have you done currently. In this case, it is asking us to use another transaction, but that is not mandatory. Once you have reached this screen, you have the option of entering a GL account number, a company code, and a fiscal year. And these are mandatory fields. 
So let's see what happens when you miss out entering one field. Let's say I have entered the GL account number already, but I forget to enter the company code. And I will now try to run this report. To run the report, you will have to click on a button which looks like a clock. It's called execute button. Enter and execute, these two buttons are very important when you are working in SAP as you always need to click on one of these for running or executing any transactions. When I try to click on the execute button, you will see that there is an error at the bottom of the screen and it is not allowing me to display the report. The error over here says at least one company code should be entered. So we will put back the company code value and now try to execute this again. And this time, a report has been executed. What we see on the left side over here are the different figures from every period. When I say period, it means every month in SAP terminology. So in the month of January, there was an amount of 2000 which was debited and an amount of 13960 which was credited and this was only for this particular GL account which we have run the report for. Similarly in the next month you had a 600 debit and a 20,020 credit and then you see on this third column the balance from one to the other is given here. And eventually, you can also see the cumulative balance. From one month to another, you can see how the balance changes in the last column. Now let's try to see, even in a deeper format, how does it exactly look on a line item level. As I said earlier, this report only gives you a whole summary of the balance of the account at the end of the month. It does not give you each and every line item. If you click on this value, if you double click on it, it will take you to another report called a line item display report, which you can see on the top on the title bar. A line item display report will give you a clearer picture. It will not just give you the amount which you saw previously, but also things like on which date was this document created and what was the document type and what is the document number and also on the right side you will see that this figure is in euros but the other figure is in USD and this depends on the exchange rate which is set up in the system. You will also see that a profit center was assigned to this particular document. Now, if I go a step back and I click on 537, you will notice that there are multiple lines in this case, which means four different documents with four different amounts were posted and these totally come to 537 negative. So this is to give you an idea of how exactly do line item display reports look like. If I go back, I'll reach back on the screen where the GL account balance is shown. And if I go one more step back, it takes me again to the screen where we selected the GL account and the company code and the year. If I go one last step back, then it will take me back to the main screen where we started off. Whenever you are on the main screen, you will notice that the back button gets deactivated. You cannot press it anymore. You can only press the yellow button if you want to log off from SAP completely. I'll go back to the presentation now. So this is what we already saw. This is of course another example, but I showed you 
a latest example in the training system as of now, how it looks like when we try to execute it. We will stop this video here and in the next video we will cover more transaction codes in a different format. Thank you very much for watching Edupedia World Videos.